Greetings. Welcome to the Asana Kitchen. I'm David Garig, and I'm here with Sarah Hatcher today. Welcome, Sarah. And we have our today our love letter to Galavasana, a uh, beautiful but challenging uh, third series arm balance. Well, one of, the th one of the things I love about it, honestly, is that in terms of an, uh, one of the third series arm balances, it's actually a little bit easier. <laughs> it's a little bit forgiving. I mean, it's still super challenging, which I love about it, but it's a little bit easier. I love the, the rubrics cube of that top arm, the top leg, the, the leg on top of the arms and dialing in that foundation and then and the back leg as part of that foundation. And, and I love that trying to, to be exposed and forward as you reach back through that back leg. And you're like soaring through the air. It's like a super powerful position, but it has this freedom to it. So Sarah, what about you? Why are you wanting this love letter to Galavasana? I feel like Galavasana is one of, it's a, it's a break in the series. You have these families of poses. We've got the Kukutasana family. And then this Galavasana, it kind of just has its own story. And then in, in Ekapada Vakasana A and B, and all of the arm balances, this, this fourth one is its own story. Uh, coming up back up, back to practice after the two babies, this is the one that I found most, yeah, most forgiving and the easiest place to find Uyana and Mulamanda. Nice. And so balancing two different directions, like you say, uh, for me, like going that way and going that way, you always taught me that way. When you come up, you go in two directions and never up, it's forward and out. And, and the up I takes care of itself. And it's over. Yeah, if you just remember those two things, then it's not so bad. And Sarah, that's amazing though, that after two babies, this is, you found the, this one like worked for you and brought you back to the arm balance fold. <laughs> and it immediately catches the mulabandha and the pelvic floor. And I think when you're building the pelvic floor back and the Uddiyana bandha and all of that back, that this one will, will humble you a bit. But it makes you, because of that humility, to learning how to rebuild it back up, it will, it will also pet you and give you uh, courage to continue the work. So you're always paying attention to your, how you get into the pose. And, and so in first series, it's a one-step process. It's like when you, you set up your um, triangle pose and then you make a move and go into it. But with third series, there's a, it's multiple steps to get into your pose. So you could say the very first thing is to um, jump to a tripod head uh, stand. Okay, and so here she goes. So get right up to the vertical position. Okay, so that's, that's gesture number one. Okay, now gesture number two is to take lotus. Okay, then Gesture number three is to lower that leg down onto your arms as close to your armpits as possible. And notice how she bends the knee to try to kind of push, use her leg to push her arm in and then straighten the leg. So that's, you hold there for a moment and get ready. Okay, and then finally, after all those steps, you're ready to come up into the pose. Come up, Sarah, with a move. There you go. Okay, and go back down, and to do it on the second side. Okay, so there you are starting in your tripod headstand. Flip into lotus, lower the leg down, and use your, the, the non-padmasana leg to kind of push and get your, arm, your leg as close to your armpits, then straighten the leg and get ready, and up you come.
If you struggle with Galavasana, I suggest you go through all of those steps all the way up until the point where your head is, is on the ground and your, le- your top leg is straight. So right before you, you come up and um, work that position. So become very proficient at this series of gestures. Jump to the vertical position, get the Padmasana, lower the leg to the arm, get all the way until you're just about to come up. Okay, now, Sarah, go ahead, straighten that leg. Okay, now, kind of the little tiny motion of lifting your top leg and rocking into your arms without lifting your head. Yep, back and forth. Yep, and keep reaching up through the leg, reaching back through the leg. Just that little weight bearing and keeping your foot hooked on your arm. Yeah. All right. So, and then another thing you can work on, go ahead and take the second side, Sarah, is to um, get your setup, okay, and then keep your, uh, that, the, the top leg bent and try to come up. So stay in a more compact position and come up and balance. Right here, yes, work that position. See, and this is a good exercise even if you can do the Galavasana. Another thing you can do is take the position from standing, Sarah. Go, yeah, so bend your elbows, yeah, and try to put the arm, the leg on the arms, lean forward. There you go, yeah. Go ahead, lean way forward, Sarah. Yep, and keep the leg bent, yep, and work. But Sarah, lower the hips and bend the elbows. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna try to help her refine her pose. I'm always looking for the middle, okay? And uh, so every pose is a yantra. And it means it's a geometrical shape, okay? So that your, your bones are geometry. There's angles and lines, okay? And I'm always looking for the classic or the middle position. And of course, there's kind of infinite variations of every pose. The angles could be different, right? And you wanna play with that. But I always wanna know the classic, okay? And so to me, in Galavasana, that the classic is, it's not, too, it's not too vertical, it's not too horizontal. It's like right in between and, and very challenging to, to get. And wh- one of the reasons I like the classic is because it's like um, all the different parts can interact with each other optimally, right? So when you, when you get this uh, nice diagonal line, it, the, the, the leg on, that's on top of the arms plus the arms and the back leg, they all kind of f- can form this team that, whoom, stabilizes your pose. Whereas you get a more vertical position that, that um, opposing forces between all four limbs is much harder to get. So th- if this is your head, okay, so what, what you'll tend to do is, is try to lift up, okay? But what you actually wanna do is, is just lift your head and then go forward. So you're gonna go clear the head and forward, okay? And, and so Sarah, you wanna end up you're ending up too vertical, okay? So you always wanna consider your yantra line. And, and so what you wanna do is project your head forward and your leg back more instead of the back leg up, right? So head forward, back leg back. All right, so here we go. Now what, let's watch Sarah and see if she can put those instructions into play. So it's actually, it takes um, some courage because you have to trust by committing your head forward, you're kind of exposed. Okay, come to your setup pose. It's very key. Okay, sir, now forward, yes, and reach back through the leg and forward through the head. Yeah, try the other side. See that, um, that was a better pose in my, Uh, estimation. Here we go. So as soon as your head comes off the ground, forward. 
It's hard, yes. That's right, Sarah, forward as you reach back through the back leg. There's a tendency for the, 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 the back leg hip and the side waist to open out, but you're trying to keep very square in your position. Okay, last time, Sarah, take that instruction to heart. Okay, so stay forward as you come up, stay forward through your upper body, come up, and, and then stay square through the shoulders and hips. And yes. Try the other side. And Sarah, you wanna lift the back leg a little bit more. And notice how she comes up with a decisive move. It's like a crouch and spring to come up into your pose. Super, yes. Wow, she's a super strong woman. Wow, it's beautiful. So hope you enjoyed this installment of the Asana Kitchen. Thank you for joining me, Sarah, and namaste.